Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can tell, my nose is injured. I swam into the step of the swimming pool and the plaster looks better than the injury, so that's why I'm wearing that. But I have been playing pollinator lately. Take a look. So it is spring here in Australia and the plants never stop flowering. But today's video is how to pollinate Venus fly traps, which I will get to, but I want to show you guys something. These are Drosera mancara, or Drosera pygmae from the reserve mancara. And these seeds were given to us by one of our subscribers, Richard Davian. And the reason why he's given them a different name, let me get it out, is because the flowers are actually smaller than the normal pygmaeas. They're literally like a third the size. So these flowers are way, way smaller. And you can see the tiny little plantlets are everywhere. The plantlets themselves are smaller. Smaller than your pinky finger. So he really is onto something when he says that this could be a different species. And of course, I believe him. Look at them, they're tiny. Anyway, let's show you the rest of the plants. Obviously the Venus flytrap flowers. They're flowering. Our other little Venus flytrap Propagations are growing really well there, as you guys can tell. The one in Sphagnum is not doing as well as the one in Peat, for whatever reason, but we'll do a video on that later. Our Calintias are flowering. Our Drosophilum are flowering. And like I said, all of the Drosophila are flowering. But we have one issue, guys. We had an aphid attack and I sprayed these guys with neem oil and they're really not looking good. Not all of them will come back, some will, and our Drosra Calinciae as well. I don't know what's going on, they're rotting away. It's either the aphids, the neem oil, or the water, or the change in heat and fluctuation and humidity, which is a very drastic change, is constantly where I am right now. So it's one of these things. But I'll figure it out sooner or later, guys. Anyway, just want to show you the collection at the moment, some Saracenias. Our baby Venus fly traps. Yeah. Anyway, let's start the video. Oh, sorry guys, I didn't even show you these ones. You can see they're also flowering. All of our Utricularia are flowering there, they're done. But we got these little guys coming up. Viscomata, the, the purple variety. Our tubers are going dormant, I put them here while they die off and then I move them into the garage. And here are some of our Drosera hilaris and Drosophila, uh, Darlingtonia. And you can see they're not doing well. We had a massive storm the other day, water flooded this, and it's been hot and then very cold and then very humid and then not humid at all and they're really struggling. Um, here are some of our Darlingtonias. They're coming back from the repotting pretty well. But some of them have died off, so... This is my first season um, growing plants here on the Gold Coast in summer, so I still need to get used to it. Everyone's micro microclimate is different, but at least the colony, the mother colony of the dot of the Polaris are doing well. So yeah, let's go back to the original video. Okay guys, so after that short little update, we are now going to show you how to pollinate Venus flytrap so you can get some seeds. Um, I don't know how well you can see this. Nepenthes. But it's it's growing. It's pretty happy actually. It's pretty happy in this environment because it is like basically subtropical. It's so hot. But now <laughs> let's get back to the story. We are going to be pollinating some Venus fly traps. So what you can use is a toothpick like this, and you color the back of it. You make it black so that you can see the pollen or you get like a small tiny little toothbrush i think the toothbrush is actually better because it can pick up the pollen way easier than a toothpick can so what you're going to do you're going to use the toothpick to pick up the pollen off of the anthers and you're take the pollen and you're going to put it on the stigma of a different flower it's better to put it on a, the flower of a different plant because cross-pollination yields the best results in 
basically all living things. You want genetically different organisms to share their DNA together, because if you make ones that are clones or have the same DNA, they can become weak and it's basically inbreeding and we all know about that. I've been talking about it a lot lately for some weird reason. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna turn around the camera and show you how to do it with a toothpick and hopefully you guys will understand this process and then I'll talk a little bit more about how to actually look after Venus flytrap if it is flowering and letting it flower and collecting the seeds and all that stuff. Because you'll notice that letting your Venus flytraps flower can kill the plants and you'll see with mine, mine are very healthy, but you'll see exactly what I mean. And once again, guys, I'm sorry about the noise. I genuinely have nowhere else to record. And this is the, like the only place that I can record, but yeah. So as you can see, we have two different Venus flytraps over here. Because they're flowers, one is five, one is one. And the plants is not looking too good. As you can see, there's only one plant. There's no new growth, which is to be expected when they flower. Can't see it too well because of the the shadows, but there are there's nothing new growing out of the plant. The only leaves they have are the ones that they grew before they flowered, and it will stay like that essentially until they're done flowering. And this is why flowering can kill the plants because no new leaves are grown, and that means that the plant gets no no very little extra sunlight, and they have to rely on what they have. And in most cases, this kills people's plants. But anyway. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take a toothpick. Let me try switching the lights. Yeah, the lights didn't do anything, guys. I apologize, it's not much I can do. But you're gonna take your Venus flytrap, you're going to take the pollen off of the anthers. The anthers are these small little, These small little bits on the sides here. The anthers are the male part of the flower and they create the pollen, which is like the sperms. And the stigma is this middle bit. You see that that's a very good example right there. Middle bit with the sticky white bits and all the male bits are on the outside like that. So you're gonna take some pollen from one of the males. And the reason why you use a black tip of the toothpick is so you can see if it has pollen on it or not. But say you want to take as much pollen as you can, just hit the anthers. Pollen should fall or at least get stuck onto the toothpick. Now it's very difficult to actually see what's going on. So, What I just did uh, that ended up not working is that I took an anther off, but then it fell onto the ground. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it again. But I'll try to show you on camera. You want to press up against the anthers. Like that. Press up against them, put your finger behind for support and like really try to press them. See, I got one off there. And now, without dropping it again, you want to take your other plant and I'm just gonna put the whole anther on there. Just like that. And now hopefully, hopefully that's enough. I mean, you're supposed to just take some pollen off of the anther, but if you just take the entire anther, I mean, come on, that should work. So let's try it with this one. If you crush up the anther a little bit. You said you just want to get pollen on this black bit and you can see the pollen and you can put the, the pollen onto the stigma of the other ones. That's what we're trying to do here. So let's tap them a little bit. Just like that. And you should be able to see some on there. Probably can't see anything because it's so dark. And you want to take what you've just done, take the pollen from the one like we just did. Instead of taking the whole anther, take the pollen and you just put it on top of the stigma. And you do that for all of them. Like I said, it's better to do across different plants. So from these ones to that one. 
and continue like that this flower over here has just opened you can see the stigma in the middle is not as open as those ones so it does take time for the plants to actually develop their stigmas before they are receptive and this is why you have to pollinate them like every single day to make sure you have good seed set Ob obviously it's not really that important for these type of basic venus fly traps these ones are just typicals they're really not that impressive but i just want to demonstrate the process to you guys so take pollen like this from one make sure you can see it on the end of the toothpick and place it on the stigma of a different plant the one that's back here put it on there and that's how you do it guys do it every single day it is that simple now you can also leave it for your you know native wild pollinators to do it i don't know what pollinates these guys flies or bees or something wasps honestly i don't know i can find out on google but honestly it's not that big of a concern for me but yeah that is it what you can also do which i have been doing you just take the two and you literally just shove them into each other's faces like this this is probably the easiest and quickest way to do it and I've done this with lots of different plants and it works well enough. And there you go. Multiple ways to pollinate your Venus fly traps. Now let's talk about their care. So like I said with your Venus fly traps, when they are flowering, like obviously this one is, they make no new leaves. There is no new leaves coming out of this plant. And that means you have to be very, very careful with their, you know, looking after them. Because they're putting almost all their energy into flowering and making seeds and whatnot that they're not gonna put any energy into new leaves. So you have to preserve these leaves as best you can. So besides giving them the basic care of as much sunlight as possible, sitting in water 24 seven and the right soil in the right pots, you have to make sure that you foliar fertilize them. So here's some foliar. Just spray it onto the plant, just like that. Do it for both of them. Foliar ferts is a very good way to help your plant get some extra energy. So you guys can do that with yours. It's not imperative to do it. But what you want to really try and prevent is not poking the traps. You don't want the plant to expend energy for no reason. You can see this trap here is closed, but there's an insect in it. That trap there is closed, but there's an insect in it. If you close the traps with no food in it, like this one right here, for whatever reason, it just closed and this. So this one just closed and there's nothing in it. <laughs> you don't want that to happen because it wastes the energy of the plant. Every little tiny bit of valuable energy needs to go into flowering. And if it closes like that, when it wastes energy because there's not, it's not catching an insect and the insect would give it more energy than what it uses, but if you just let it close and there's nothing for it to eat, it just wastes energy. So that's very annoying. Don't know why that even happened, but giving it a foliar fertilizer gives it some extra energy without it wasting. Did this one just close too? What? Why? I think spraying them with that triggered them to close because I sprayed in the traps maybe? That is weird. I've never had that before. Okay. Spray them from further away. Don't do what I just did. That doesn't make any sense. I'll figure it out. Anyway, you want to ensure that you give them energy, give them the right care and let them survive. Don't close the traps for no reason. Don't let kids or animals or rain hit the traps to make them close for no reason because when the trap constantly closes, it uses energy, like I said, it dies off. And if a trap closes multiple times and doesn't get any energy like this one here, it stays closed and then starts dying off. It starts dying off from the tip there. You see that, it goes black. And we want to try to preserve these little traps leaves as much as we can because they give the plants energy obviously by getting the energy from the sun 
so that's basically it so what happens that your plant will then hopefully get pollinated if you pollinate it every day like you should try pollinate it as much as you can or let the wildlife do it honestly if, i hope the bugs are doing it because they'll do a better job than me let them pollinate the plants and what happens is that like the middle here you might see a little black dot or a black little spent flower bud don't know how well you can see that that there will start to swell up if it has taken if it has been fertilized it will start swelling up become like pretty swollen pretty big and round and the seeds will start to develop and obviously give it the same care look after it and as it develops it will get more and more and more swollen and then eventually that little bit will crack open and you get venus flytrap seeds and venus flytrap seeds are small round very shiny black seeds about what is that like three or four like five millimeters in length they're tiny they're very very small not as small as drosera seeds but they're very very small and shiny and then at that point when the whole thing starts to become like that and they all start cracking open you can just cut off the whole flower at the base take your seeds and put them onto some soil i've done a video on this in the past and then you can grow some venus flat shops from seed so yeah that's basically the care if you want to have a venus flower trap that is flowering you have to make sure that it is, is a healthy plant these are healthy plants even though they have they have like little ghosts in them to make them close or something they are healthy plants if you have a sickly plant and you let it flower your plant will die because as you can tell no new leaves are being made the plant will suffer it will use all its energy and die if there are healthy ones like this with a thick rhizome lots of energy stored underneath in the rhizome the plant will be just fine so make sure that if you let it flower that your plant is healthy or else it will die be very careful of that and that is essentially it guys if you want to see how these seeds come along and see if they pollinate and whatnot make sure that you do subscribe to the channel so you can follow along in their story if you like the video please remember to leave a like if you have any questions comment in the comments section below you can email me facebook me or instagram message me i'm happy to help you guys with anything but yeah gonna try review the footage in editing to see how the how these things closed with that i'm pretty sure i just sprayed them into the traps directly and that caused them to close or something very strange because i don't think i've ever seen that happen before but yeah that's how you fertilize the venus flat trap that's how you get seeds out of them and that's the care that they need so i hope you guys enjoyed this small little update on how to fertilize your venus flat traps and i'll see you guys in the next one